everybody. I'm Amelie Howard, and I am a young adult author. Uh, my latest books are The Fallen Prince and The Almost Girl. Um, I'm here with Groovy TV and excited to be here. Hey, this is Groovy. I'm here with the legendary author, Emily Howard, and you have the most wicked shirt in the history of ever. Free. Free throat hugs, just for you. <laughs> you truly are the dark, on the dark side of the Vader. Arrgh. Yes, I am. Take it. Take it. So how's the Comic-Con treating you so far? Comic-Con has been really great so yeah. far. It's nice to see all the, you know, the cosplaying and all the guests, the enthusiasm, the passion, the excitement. It's great. I think this is even bigger than last year. I think they're seeing something like 160,000, something like that. Yeah. Holy Quadrupled, I think, from the first one. Wow, that's insane. I mean, that could put us in the running for second place. I obviously can't do math because quadrupled 10,000 is, <laughs> is 40. Way more than that. <laughs> Well, it's, a, it's a good thing that you're an amazing author and not a mathematician, I guess. Thank you so much. I like to master the words, not the numbers. <laughs> I can't do anything. <laughs> so let's dive in with the show and tell. What do, you, what do you got here? So the first book I have is Bloodcraft, which is a sequel to Bloodspell. Uh, it's about witches and vampires and a cataclysmic war, lots of forbidden romance. Um, it was also an Ippy winner last year. It won the silver medal in the National Junior YA cat National YA category. Wow. Yeah, I'm very psyched. And then I have The Almost Girl and The Fallen Prince, which is my science fiction series. Um, this just came out this year from Sky Pony. And it's about a girl super soldier from a parallel universe. So girl Terminator, super fierce. That is super, and that, I love that cover. Who the covers are so awesome. Who, who's doing your art on those? So this is the publisher, my publisher, is Sky Pony Press. They did them. I love uh, the, the the girl on this cover, Riven. She's so fierce, and this yeah. guy channeling some Daryl Dixon with this crossbow. <laughs> yeah, I was happy with them. That's marketing right there. Oh yeah, for real, for real. <laughs> yeah. So, um, like, what uh, like what are the characters like in the science fiction books? I mean, tell me about them. So the character in this book, she is a super fierce soldier. She was bred to, you know, built to defend and protect. So she's very like, you know, cut and dried. And her journey in this book to find the true sort of heir to her parallel universe right. um, is is kind of it gets caught up into her journey to figure out her humanity and you know find her vulnerability and really become a girl. You know, the almost girl. Yeah. Because she's she's part Borg. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> Got some cyborg action yeah, going on. Totally, That's totally, awesome. yeah. I love it. Yeah, me too. Now, what about uh, what about this one? So, in the sequel, um, she finds the real king, but people from the past reappear to try to take back what they think belongs to them. Okay. So it's a big fight to you know keep her her kingdom safe, and mm -hmm. then they find out that there's another pocket civilization hidden in the Amazon rainforest. So in the parallel universe, what would have been the Amazon rainforest that didn't get destroyed by the tech war? Okay. Yeah. A hidden colony. And there's no water in their world, but because the Amazon is such a like, you know, a lush area of our world right. in the parallel universe, they've managed to sort of dome it off so that it's a self self-sustaining ecology. That is really cool. Ecological system. You build really cool worlds. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'm a big fan of world building, you know, and fell in love with it when I first read Lord of the Rings, you know, and that the world building in there is phenomenal. So that's kind of what I, I aspire to. So how do you, like, actually build a successful character? Well, you start from one bone at a time, then you put some skin on. <laughs> I'm kidding. Shin bones connected to the <laughs> foot right. foot bone or whatever. However <laughs> I mean, you know, the trick with any character building is to just make them multidimensional. You don't want a flat character. You want a character that your readers, and in my case, teen readers and some older readers, can connect to. And with Riven, you know, what I loved about her was that she was so just unapproachable from the beginning. And then by the end of the book, you're like, wow, she can smile <laughs> or she can love without, you know, being afraid to. So true character development goes on in these books. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm a huge fan of like having the right character development because otherwise your fans, I mean, readers are on a journey with you. If, right. you're, if your journey is a straight line from beginning to end that's not interesting to anyone yeah. you want them to start somewhere and finish somewhere you know yes. hopefully somewhere up here 
instead of down here. <laughs> I'm an awesome character and now I suck. No. But that's when the other, the trilogy right. comes in. Yeah. Right, yeah. Speaking yeah. of which, are you working on the next book? So this, this, this series was actually a duology. Ooh, fancy word. Uh, so it just means two books. Mm -hmm. um, what I am working on right now is my next uh, YA comes out next spring, and that's the sequel to Alpha Goddess, which was about um, a reincarnated Indian goddess, so it's Hindu mythology. Yeah. And the sequel to that, written about Kali, comes out next year. Psyched. So, it's so awesome. Yeah, so excited. So how far are you along the writing process with that now? Um, I've already turned that in, so I'm in the revisions process. Nice. Yeah. You're such an overachiever. Gosh, I know. That's what my mom said <laughs> when I was pretty little. Oh, well, mom, you've done a good job. Aw, thanks. <laughs> sure. So um, one last question. Now, you had to enjoy all your tabling and signings and all that stuff. What do you enjoy about the con besides what you're into and like what, what you're involved in? For me, okay, my most epic moment this morning. Okay, wait, I met Ian Summerhalder yesterday. He's from the Vampire Diaries. He's super hot. And that was awesome. Like, nice. hug me more. <laughs> and then I met Stan Lee. No and way. that was awesome. Yeah, it was incredible. Like, I mean, the man's a legend. And then this morning, I met Terry Brooks. He asked me about my books. I gave him a signed copy of Alpha Goddess, which he was really excited to read. And then he signed a book for me, took pictures with me, asked me about writing, and then signed a book saying, I hope you have magical writing. Continue to have magical writing. That's amazing. Mind blown. This is where I go, boom! Ooh. Boom! Yeah. Well done. Yeah, thanks. You've had a good con. I did have a great con. And I, I mean, I love that these, you know, people, they're human too, and they're excited, well, you know, to meet you. I didn't stand in line to meet Terry Brooks. I just met him in the bookstore. And he was standing near my, near this series. So he asked me, he's like, well, what made you decide to give me Alpha Goddess? And I said, well, I didn't know what you like to read, but you're like the, you know, you write epic fantasy, and that's what made me fall in love with it. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to give you, like, a sci science fiction book. I wanted to give you a fantasy book that I put my own, uh, you know, mythological twist on. Yeah. So, cool. it was so cool. It was really awesome. Awesome. Well, congratulations on Thank everything. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, this is Groovy. We're at Denver Comic Con. This is Emily Howard. you got to get her books. They are amazing. Bye. Bye. Woohoo! Groovy TV!